Bobby, and I'm accompanied with Frank Linden Booth, who is going to help us out uh, with our presentation today. Uh, I played the part Hello. of Franklin Roosevelt in Annie Warbucks, and they, I shaved my beard for it. That's the first time I took care of the beard, and they came up with this outfit. And I thought I made a pretty good Franklin Roosevelt, didn't I, Frank? No. Oh, he doesn't like me at all. Anyway, I ended up resurrecting the character for the channel because we were told it would be a very good idea to have uh, some kind of a character. I'm trying to find, there we are. I'm trying to uh, get this stick put in so we can get this up on the telescreen or on the television set. Okay, new device detected. I'm gonna take them off, okay. Let's see, it's ready to use, okay. Let me hit this button. Okay. And what do you suggest? The mouse would be nice. Mr. Mouse. Uh, my computer. Good. He, he understands it. Uh, is this a Mac or no. a, okay. Will it play an MP, I did, I recorded it both an MP4, MP4, I think it's clear. Wait a minute, let me make sure that's the right one. I think it is. Nope, that's not the right one. That's the, okay. That's the other one. Is that it? That one? That's the wrong one. Okay. A move. Will it play a move file? Or an I think you need to double check. Let's see if the move file plays. Yes, that's it. And that is the title of our show. Marketing Pinball and Video Games A to Z. Uh, we decided to do this, uh, this was actually Rob's idea because this is the first show Rob is doing that has both pinball and uh, video games at, classic video games. So he said, why don't you do something based on the thing I did about 20 years ago? Something about 20 years ago. Um, about marketing and selling right to the home because this may be an idea for you folks to try. You could do it uh, on the weekend, you could do it on Tuesdays, whatever day you want, or you could do it full time. Uh, one man did it full time as a result of that show, and he's very successful today, uh, Gene Lewin at uh, Vintage Arcade Superstore in California. He is doing it full time. He's got, I think, 20 employees, and he's doing quite well. And it was all as a result of this show that we did that's been this is not quite the same show, is it, Frank? A <laughs> little bit updated. There's a little bit of update, isn't there? Well, I guess it would be wise that we at least play this part here. Very special presentation. And of course, the proper credits for both me and my large friend, Frank. Okay, we're going to start, and uh, what we did is we decided to do this in an outline form. And the, um, the script, okay. It's nine pages. Now, I understand that there's an event at 4.30 that starts at 4.30, but Rob has assured me that even if this show runs, uh, we've prepared about an hour uh, after the show. We'll be open for questions and answers, but if you have to go, if you really want to go, you, you're welcome to leave. You won't hurt me in my feelings. Oh. Uh, Just be we sure to give a thumbs down. Thumbs you know. down. <laughs> we get a lot of them. I, I came here. It was supposed to have 100 books to sell, and unfortunately, almost all sold out. I've got 10 books to sell here at the show. Uh, if any of you want it, this is the first run. The second run is going to be produced in about two weeks. As a matter of fact, on Amazon, uh, used books are $39. I'm not quite sure why somebody would buy a used one for $39 when they get a new one for $30, but they can't get it right away. Uh, but I will have pictures I can autograph for you that we are going to be selling for $5 that has different pictures of me. Right, Frank? And we even have one of you in it, too, don't we? If you want it. And I also have free cards for anybody. Uh, if you stop me in the hall, 
I'll be happy to sign one of my uh, cards, superstar cards. Uh, and uh, Frank has one now. Yep. So Frank will be happy to pose for pictures and such uh, all throughout the weekend. We'll be here all weekend. We're going to have a lot of fun. Well, let's start. I think the best place to start is naming your business. Catchy names are remembered. You could even pay for a professional logo. Believe it or not, I actually paid for the TNT Amusements logo. Uh, I didn't like what I saw, and I wanted a certain style. Uh, think of a good name. Frank, what do you think of those names? Quality Pinball, Pinball Classics. Yeah, you want to try to avoid the generic stuff, although it was interesting trying to drive through the tunnels in New York City with a truck with dynamite on the side of it after 9-11. <laughs> or a white van. <laughs> yeah, I got to tell you, do you know don't, we don't were... Don't pick a name that's going to have the police looking at you. We were in the World Trade Center at the end of August 2001. A man sold his wonderful business there, and he had five games there. Uh, uh, there was a foosball and four video games. They weren't pinballs. And he said, would you please pick? I'm giving him two games. I think one was a Tato Frontline. He was leaving there. And I'm bringing the other three to my house. And he's retired. And there we were there at the end of August. And less than two weeks later, the, um, the, the buildings came down along with the two games that we left. That was very sad. Uh, can you imagine owning a business for two weeks and losing it? Uh, but anyway, uh, the, the name TNT is because it's my initials. I had the misfortune of being named Todd Nichols Tucky. But you could name it your name. You could A-A-W Amusements. But that may be hard to remember. So think of something that's good and try to pick a business name that matches an available web address that you can still secure. There's a lot of people that have copyrighted certain addresses already, or they've registered them. Then they want to sell you the website for some absurd... Yeah, that's... If you're having trouble picking a name, I suggest you run through, you know, like GoDaddy or something and just see what names are available because then it'll help you narrow something down, mm -hmm. too. So if your name matches identical, it's going to be easier for people to remember. Try to avoid dashes, like pinball dash amusements or something like that. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, yeah, I think, yep. So that's a good place to start, folks. Um, the next thing to do is to figure out your showroom situation. Find a central location. Try to avoid using your home like I did. But y if you have to, you have to. But Frank and I will both mention that you should avoid main roads. I purposely picked a road on an industrial boulevard. I didn't want to be on the main road because we didn't want uh, imbeciles stopping just to say, yeah, let me see what you have, man. And you turn all the games on, they just want to play for half an hour, then leave. So we're off the main road, meaning they have to look you up first and be searching for you. So you want to do the same thing. Don't be, don't be worried about putting yourself in an industrial park. You don't want to be in a strip center because you're going to just get a lot of wasted timers. Plus, you'll probably pay a lot less in rent, too, because retail front space can get real expensive. Yep, that's true. And you want something safe, too. You don't want to... Uh, uh, because think of, think of this, a lot of your customers may be more affluent people and they bring their families to pick out a game. So you want to be careful with your location pick out. And of course the next thing is laying out your showroom like you would your dream arcade. Maybe copy your arcade in your house. So that's an idea. We always did low level lighting because then we didn't have to dust. But uh, <laughs> neon tubes, oh gosh Frank, that, that, that must be from the uh, I changed all our neon to LED. So uh, accent lighting highlights the machines and hides the dust, as I said. Plan for expansion without moving. Maybe the building next door to you that you rented is open, and you can put an option with the landlord if things are going good. What do you think of that idea? Yeah, uh, sometimes you're going to cut into your workspace. That can be tough, too, but you know, you have to judge how things are going and grow accordingly, but don't get in some, don't start off with something you're barely going to fit into. You know, if you can afford a little bit more, you might want to go a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, something that we suggest too, as soon as I get to the next slide here, we're on page three, um, is an alternative use for your showroom, which I started about a year, less than a year after I moved into our showroom that we've been in now 36 years, 30, 31 years, 31 years. Parties, we do parties, arcade parties. 
you know what? I don't think anybody was doing private arcade parties other than maybe Chuck E. Cheese, but you still shared the rooms with other people. Mall arcades would open an hour early on Sunday morning. If you wanted to have your birthday party at the mall arcade and have nobody there, you have to do it at 10 a.m. But we decided we would never open for arcade or public use because our township forbid it. They said that arcade games and pinball machines are the work of the devil. And they didn't want hangouts and kids and creepy people. So I had to hire a lawyer. By. And me? <laughs> let you slip by. <laughs> I had to hire a lawyer, and we were able to get it approved where we could do private parties where we could control who comes in, who comes and goes. Okay. Yeah, also, uh, people will come in to buy a game. They'll say they had a party 20 years ago when they were a kid. So people will come back. They will remember. They will. They will. And, and it does seem to work. And um, finding the games, too, um, to put it, to stock in your arcade uh, used to be easier than it is now. Auctions were all over the place. Have you noticed the auctions have pretty much dried up? And then when you try to go out there to buy a Qbert, you find the auction Qbert is 1500 Right, Jason? And Jason will tell you that. Jason Kopp is right there. He's the man, the vector man. The man that uh, got that Vectrix in the hallway, too. I, I saw it when I walked by. I got to play it today. Okay. Uh, three kinds of people come into your store. Some will buy on the spot. Some are planning to buy games for the near future after getting the basement or the cellar renovated. And the rest are window shoppers, aren't they, Frank? Yeah, you don't want to waste time. You can usually tell people right away. Um, but then again, you can't. I had a couple guys come in and said, oh, yeah, I want to look at this game, and, and I like this one over here, and we're opening up a bar. And I'm like, okay, well, which one do you want? I want them all. Guy whipped out a credit card. It'd be 20 grand on the spot. You never know. And other people walk around, oh, looking at this, and I had this game when I was a kid, and I want to get one again, and they just never come back. And then, like I said, you get the people that are coming in. After over time, you will be able to figure out who's who. And you always get the people that ask for a game you don't have. Yeah. And the second you say you can get it, the, oh, well, I don't have the money right now. So. The game I really want is Spy Hunter. I, I wish just you got had one that. in. <laughs> well, I don't really want it now. Can you get something else? How about Discs of Tron, the one you climb in? I said, yeah, I'll just get you one tomorrow. Yes, sir. <sighs> Do you know how many games I've sold? I've sold, I just did a check, I actually go back to the old DOS computer system, over 28,000 machines. 28,000. Now, a big part of them were brand new, which we didn't have to do anything. We had brand new foosballs we used to carry, uh, the air hockey, a better grade than the home one. Uh, lots of brand new pinballs, Stern and Williams, when Williams was still out class there. Of 81. Lots of class 81. Lots of class 81. I think we sold, I think, four or 500 of them. Um, but old Even classics. Arcade Legends, too, when they first came out. We, we sold over 500, I think over 600 Miss Pac-Mans and 400 Asteroids. No, not Asteroids, uh, Pac-Man. Asteroids, we only sold, I think, like 150 or something. A low number. And Discatron, I think we sold over 1,000 of them. Just kidding. We only sold very few of them. Actually, I just got one back, and that that's going to relate to a future topic uh, that I'm going to tell you about. That's going to be in a later one. Let me get the button here, and we'll move on to our next slide. And here we go. Advertising is important. Word of mouth still is a really great tool. Somebody's happy with your game, they'll, they'll say it. On Facebook, too, for instance, somebody's happy with something, they'll leave you a good review or something. And if they hate you, they'll go right to you. <laughs> Put a sign on your truck. You really should. Uh, you know there's magnetic signs you can peel off if you want to go incognito. But there you can put a sign on your truck with the phone number and, of course, the website address. Uh, or even the Facebook address, too. And we hired originally uh, a professional to establish a website. I knew nothing about it. We had an early website. And Frank, uh, was that before you were there? I don't know, the early 90s, I guess, uh, late 80s or something. Uh, and then we made it simple, obviously the name of the game. When I first tried to register my business name, TNT Amusements, it was already taken by TNT, uh, Tim and Tina, in 
Columbus, Ohio, and they since dropped it because they got so many people confusing them with me. So they changed it. I think they're now TNT Pinball, I think. You have the TNT Pinball name. No, I don't. No. I mean, you did. I don't remember now. But needless to say, the website is very, very important. Uh, email, at answering emails and answering phone calls that you get is very, very, very important. And uh, there's something new you can do, real cheap. You wouldn't believe how cheap it is. You can hire a company. They call themselves 360s. They'll come out to your place, and they'll do a 360 of your showroom. And the 360 we are is basically, come up right in the top. which I'm going to explain well, I guess here. It's better than they Fox come out and they yeah. photograph it just like uh. the Google does with the maps. And then you and your customers can walk through the place. That's usually what comes out of your expression. So, uh, th unfortunately, I didn't get this trimmed perfectly. Frank, uh, th we're trying to show people what we're doing. We're giving them a laugh, too, and it's free. Yeah. So They're enjoy lucky. it. And see, on. there's our box, okay? This is our website. And you click on See Inside. You and don't this want to see the, the photos. Google. You want to see inside. And there so you, you go inside. Now. But they're just static yeah, at pictures. At the bottom, you're going to have this big, long toolbox. There's a couple other C inside. Bigger than this toolbox right here. What a creep. You hit hide image because you don't want that now. Now, now you use your right, your uh, left mouse button, and you can move around the room, see? But when you see an arrow, if you click on it, you can actually move. See, we're outside now. Now, this is the door. industrial park that we're in. There's an X. When you hit the X, you move to the next point of the camera. Okay? Now, see? See the arrow is going around the corner. So this now is really in. fun and really clever. Put the X again. And there. I can't tell you how many parties I head, booked see? with this and a lot of interest the in the room. games. The problem was is they wanted now games the taken. Room. This, is where this was filmed two years parties. ago. Best so of Philly. Yeah, we did get picked Best, best of Philly, so I'm very Philly. proud of that. For I'm birthday, sure or for parties for adults. Isn't that nice? So this is the area that we'll talk this about later, do doing parties. And uh, this is so all empty except the employees oh, use it during the week. Transgender bathrooms. That's right. I was the first we one. We were ahead. Of, we, we did it before <laughs> everybody else. Isn't this neat? step through there's our antique light bulbs display of course our holograms I have beautiful holograms you can see now you can go into another room now interestingly enough um, oh gosh what happened I must have hit the wrong button Frank I'm not very good at this well, I'm not very good at anything am I Frank no. okay, let me back what? up a bit no nope, we're too far ahead step through there's our Antique light I'm very bulbs sorry, display. folks. I can barely see the X on the screen. I, I want to point out that some folks from Minecraft video did this very thing to us. They actually came into TNT and they took the videos that we sh provided them and they made a Minecraft animated video of Frank and I walking around the showroom. It's one of the videos on our YouTube channel. Some of you may have seen it. Uh, but we had a lot of fun doing that, and it was really neat. We are up to the yellow pages. The yellow pages, of course, is one of the most amazing things you can ever do. The yellow pages, right? Yes, and I happen to have a yellow pages right here. Uh -huh. Look, the yellow pages. Everybody loves the yellow pages, don't they? Nope. What do you mean now? Nobody uses that thing anymore. Todd, come on. Uh. But, but that, that's how we always advertise. Hence why your business is failing. I was in 26 editions at one point. 2700 a month in yellow pages advertising. That's, That's what it costs. Oh! Internet? What's that? Google, all that fun stuff. <laughs> oh, okay, Todd. Thank you. I'll, I'll file this someplace. Yeah, please do. File it someplace good. It's a mess. Yes, the yellow pages, unfortunately, is not the greatest thing anymore. 
This is actually an update from the 2004 show. Well, that was actually our number one thing, wasn't it, back then? Mm -hmm. I think it was. But uh, the yellow pages, um, did I go, wait a minute. No, I went ahead one slide. There we are. Um, Your phone system is important. Uh, I realize a lot of you don't have a phone system. You just have automation uh, on your phone that answers and you use your cell phone. How many of you, well, I don't even have to ask because it's every one of you, have called somebody's number and had that lovely message says, the mailbox is full and no further messages can be taken. It happens over and over. And then I found out why. A number of the people said they, quote, don't want to be annoyed. And I said, well, annoyed? I said, your customers are calling. For instance, well, I don't want to be called when I'm having dinner. So they leave the mailbox full so they can't stuff another message in it. That's rather unique, isn't it, Frank? Well, it's just an idea. If you're going to have, uh, if you're going to have more than four or five people in your staff, a phone system is great, and uh, you can now buy them pretty inexpensively. That'll handle up to four lines. It's interesting. Phone systems go from four, and then they jump to twelve lines. And I said, don't you have one that's like right in between? Because we have six lines in our, in our shop. So we have one call in number that bypasses the automation that we don't publicize. Then we have a, believe it or not, a fax line. We have a fax. Fax! And the a roller deck. We do have a roller deck system, too. Very, very, it's digital. And you can easily find the numbers with your digits. I still have it on computer, though. Don't I, Frank? Uh, on a program from 1989 that has to run inside of a Windows XP box that crashes our bookkeeping program. Yes, but so the DOS program. the program's program. been open, you gotta do something else on the computer, you gotta completely shut it down and restart it, and he raves that the program is so great and never needed to be updated. It's never failed. It doesn't do anything. It's never did updates. You can't have more, the more so games to a customer. He has, he hates me, hates so me. So the guy that bought 90 games has like 50 entries in the thing. Well, that's the pro that was a problem. We weren't thinking back then. See, years ago, we weren't thinking that one man would buy so many games. Our biggest customer, if you watch our videos, is Mark in Canada. There we go. And he lives in Moncton, above Maine. And uh, you can actually drive from Maine right, in, right up into his town. And he's now bought over 85 machines. And they're, most of them are in his house. He's got a very small, I think it's a twin. No, I think it's bigger than that. I thought he had a studio apartment. <laughs> studio. <laughs> But uh, he said he's stopping at 200, or in when his bank account's empty. But uh, he has a couple games that are gonna go out next week. But, uh, so that's an important thing. Uh, the role, uh, uh, not a Rolodex, you, you're keeping file, keeping track of your customers. Hit all your social media. Now there's so much, Facebook, Insta Instagram, Twitter. Um, you have uh, Pinterest, uh, you have YouTube. Others, um, what others, uh, media, anything that can get you in front of people. Uh, you can even call local news stations if you have something rare come in. Sometimes they'll actually come out and cover something that's unique. Uh, anything to get you in front of people. Uh, we do not spam people. We do not send uh, blank, uh, blanket emails out to people. However, we've done mailings when we've had upgrades or we offer, we used to have sales every now and then, Christmas sale. I remember we had a penny sale that was a disaster. But we had a set list of games. You buy any game in our showroom and you could buy another game for a penny. But uh, we only had two or three people come in because they didn't want the games that were a penny, for a penny. They didn't want them. Why wouldn't people want Trivia Whiz? I don't know, but if Trivia Whiz marquees ever become a hot commodity, you'll be a millionaire. We've got that thousand got of them. So the many and some trivia of them are brand new. Oh, man. Craze, yes. craze. <laughs> Newspapers, folks, they're not dead yet. Consider a classified ad that you regularly run, maybe once a week. You can usually get a good deal or something. Uh, I would only do a display ad when um, they have a real cheap deal, especially around Christmas. You can try it. But now there's these spotlight on business uh, publications. They have this one feature once or twice a year to try to get a listing in there. It's just an idea. And uh, we cover, well, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. They offer deals too. Uh, I've never been thrilled with the promotions. They've uh, Facebook had a promotion, promote this post to so many people for $20. 
I don't think I ever got anything from it. Do, we, do you think we either? No. I don't know. We get down to shows, home shows. We used to do computer shows. Years ago, you couldn't buy parts or spare things for your computer, and they actually had computer shows in town. And I would set up a booth, and I remember everybody would laugh at me. Say, why are you here? This is computers. And I said, well, we're going to try to sell pinballs and videos. And we actually got a bunch of sales from a $50 booth. And we did very well with that. The home shows are now all over the place. Most home shows have spas. That's their number one thing, I guess. But you'd be surprised how much business you may get, or future business, if you do a home show. Uh, they're usually once a year. Set up a simple but lively booth, I mentioned here. Uh, I think it would do a world of good. Now we move on to pinball and arcade shows where we are now. Yes, set up here only if you enjoy doing the show. And we do enjoy it. We do have a booth out here in the hole, pinballbuzz.com. That's the publisher of our pinball book. And he has a bunch of free stuff if you want to get there before it's all gone. He told me that the stuff's going. We were going to be selling the books there, but there are none left to sell except the 10 I have on the, on the stage. But we'll have more that we can mail. <sighs> are we up to brochures, Frank? Yep. Uh, there's 10 more. No, no, they're for Rob. Rob said he'd slit my throat if I sold them. <laughs> Is Rob still here? No, he left. Yeah, he, know, he said, no, no, no. That's Andrew. He's the president of the, of the company. Wait, is that a good name for you? President. <laughs> well, a Andrew didn't anticipate the excitement for the book, including the mistakes, young man. But that'll make the book worth more. I'm correcting. So the next edition, and I've only got halfway through. So. But it makes this one worth more, doesn't it, Andrew? Uh, Andrew, I don't think micro pinballs is mirco pinballs. Hmm. I don't know, young man. Well, I like to add. Uh, things add up. <laughs> Brochures. Are they necessary these days, Frank? What do you think? Some people think Online it's something brochure. you can have a takeaway with you. People have brochures. Stern still makes them for pinball machines to sell. They're single games. They'll make them colorful, attractive, pack in everything you offer. Rentals. Don't forget, one-day rentals. Just talking to somebody today, we were over having a hamburger over at uh, the Steed, is it? What's the place over there? Yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he rented some games uh, for a movie shoot, uh, one with Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey, right? Mm -hmm. What was the name? It's a movie's coming out uh, soon. Which is called? Wait. Yes, it didn't. It sounds like a great movie. <laughs> and it was filmed in color. Yes, he did. He did very well. He was very happy with the rental. Uh, if you want sample rates, look at my website. Uh, it'll give you an idea what you can do. We charge less for a private home rental. We drop the machines off um, Friday, and we pick them up Monday. Less wear and tear on our, my men. Don't have to work on Sunday. We don't charge them for the extra days. We just do a one-day rental. We get lots of repeat rentals. Interesting enough, people will rent every year. If they bought the game, they could trade it in because we do our trade-in deals, which I'll talk about later which is also a good way to get customers back. Prices on your brochure, don't put them in, except the rentals. Don't put prices of games on them, because as you know, the prices have changed incredibly in the last two years. Unbelievably, um, especially if you watch some of my old videos, uh, uh, people are paying astronomical prices for certain games. A TX sector, what happened? I had them for fourteen ninety nine. I thought it was a great game, and nobody nobody wanted it. But now they're four thousand. Um, so brochures are a very good thing to have, and um, I have uh, repeatedly said they were. Oh, no sound. I have no sound on this. Oh, 
That's that, that's that hum I heard. There, let's see if it has it now. Eight page brochures whoa, whoa, that you whoa, can whoa. mail out. What? What? 2005, 2006, my man. Ah. Uh, I guess I haven't printed them for a long time. And I haven't. I guess. Some of the people tell them it's your book. Ah. Uh, I guess. I guess maybe brochures may not be the future. Especially if you're shipping all over the world or all over the country. What do you think, Todd? Uh, I think I agree with you. So that's, that's an independent thing, whether you want to do that or not. Um, uh, we stopped printing, and we saved ourselves tons of money, because they were each brochure was probably 30 or 40 cents to eight page color. Uh, they could have been more. But we used to have a man call every week, and he'd ask for a brochure. I, rem I recognized the address, and I said, it hasn't changed. There's nothing new in it. I said, so I may want to buy a game. Well, I said, you must have 12 brochures now, and they're the same. So I stopped sending them to him. He did stop calling eventually, but he would leave messages late at night on our automation. And was we just he willing to him. trade movie posters for them? Yeah, <laughs> the, sea the Sea Wolf rolled movie posters. You have to watch that, that series of videos. They're so much fun. Well, we're up to keep complete records. We're on page five of eight and a half pages, so we're, we're running low. We're about half over halfway through. Maintain a master file for your sales. Of all your sales, just like we talked about the Rolodex, get a computer program, like my DOS program, Frank, that lets you cross-reference sales, and then you can find and buy back a game for another sale. You may get a result like I called up, I, somebody came in, they had to have a daddy's time machine. I have, I have to have it, that's all I want. So I, ha I think I sold 12, 13 of them, I don't know. Uh, this is probably five years ago. So I called, I started calling. You know, one phone number is disconnected, one person said they moved out, and I have, it's a different number. You finally got a hold of a couple of people. Oh, some, oh, what's it worth? I said, well, you paid 2000 for it, and I said, I could give you 1500 for it. Oh, 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 gee. I, don't know. I said, well, you've had it 15 years. I, I said, you know, it, oh, well, yeah, but gosh, somebody really wants it. Uh, uh, I, I would take 2000 for it. I said, oh, thank you very much. G goodbye. No, I'm not going to do that, but I guess I could have, right? Well, you've got to play the same game when you're dealing with your people buying from you. You call three or four people and you say, well, listen, I'm calling a couple of other people. They're all getting the same offer. This offer expires tomorrow or when the first person says yes. Well, we had, the, I brought the time machine up because I remember wh when this boob strolled in and says, hi, I know you're looking. You buy my time machine. I'm thinking of selling it. I may, but I'd have to get a really good trade-in. And I never forget his face when I said, I'm sorry, but bought one a week ago. I don't need it anymore. And his jaw dropped. And I said, I'll still give you 1500 trading credit. No. He was thinking he was going to walk in and walk out with a Terminator 2 or something, even up. So unfortunately, that was the end of that, wasn't it, Frank? Hmm. Yep. Uh, you could send postcards out to customers to remind them to change the batteries. Now, of course, we started using lithium in 99. I had a lot of people pissed at me. You're changing the integrity of my game. You're putting a flick. It comes with a double A battery. And I said, well, well, we're putting with it. They're furious. As a matter of fact, in the book, The Circus Voltaire Boob, uh, you have to, when you get the book, you have to read The Circus Voltaire story about the batteries. Um, television, TV, should you do it? Cable access in your neighborhood is cheap. So if you're trying to get local people, you can get yourself in front real cheap. You can get them to produce the ads, too. Slides. You can even do video. Now, I started doing video years ago and, and piecing them together. And my old infomercial ran, gosh, Frank, how long was that? Um, 20 years. It actually got me into the um, Philadelphia Broadcast Pioneers, um, which is a group of all these really big names in broadcasting. Uh, a local guy, Captain Noah, was in it. He did a regular show and uh, I, we frequently every month we meet I sit down and have uh, lunch when we talk about the ideas that came across over the year of broadcasting and different things we tried I got hired in because I had the lowest cheapest produced infomercial in the country 
but the budget was $500, and the show ran thousands of times, and I spent uh, probably close to three, I guess three, four hundred thousand dollars over the years advertising and broadcasting on TV, and I can't tell you how many people still remember the hand gag. So I have these up on the internet, so if you want to see some of our old shows, um, you can see it. But you know what? You can get free advertising. You get a local channel to come in and cover your story. The pinball is coming back story is perfect. Yeah, I heard the pinball. Everybody says that. Yeah, I heard the pinball's coming back. I heard the classic arcade game sales. Everybody's into it. And how about that arcade one-up that's coming out? Uh, that's going to do nothing but help the collecting market. People get the little toy game, and they're going to want the real thing. I, I think it's a great idea, and I hear there's a pinball coming from possibly from China. Somebody told me that today. I didn't have a chance to research it yet. It was me. I was just talking nonsense. Oh. We were discussing the idea that, you know, if somebody buys an arcade one up and they're playing Street Fighter, oh, I played that as a kid. I want a new one. I want a real one. <laughs> and then we were talking about, well, what kind of Chinese competition? If they come, you know, a little home model is not going to do anything. But if somebody comes up with a brand new, full size, full quality machine for two thousand dollars retail, well, that could be a problem. And that's what I was just. Okay. I had one ear quiet. I wasn't listening carefully. You were chewing loudly. <laughs> well, I, I didn't finish my burger. That was a big burger. Um, the last episodes I ran, I, I'm off the air since 2014. But I came up with a, a series of videos, and I actually re-edited the YouTube videos and came up with this show, and I put this, and I, I think one of the best music scores for pinball machines of all time was World Cup Soccer, the main theme. So I came up with this opening title sequence that ran for, I think, two or three years. We had four episodes we kept recycling. Welcome to All American Arcade, the TV show that's going to explore all the secrets and fun of the arcade business. Hi, I'm Todd Tucky, owner of TNT Amusements in Southampton, Pennsylvania, and we are going to take you on a magical tour for the next 30 minutes. Explore with us the magic and mystery of arcade games and see how you can own your very own machine pinball like you've never seen it before or how about a video game filled with all the classics of yesteryear the love meter revolution x star wars cocktail table video and pinball machines along with the standard uprights we have them all hey wait a minute let's meet the crew tony jason jonathan wallace walter Stephen, Frank, a lot now thinner. Now sit back and relax and enjoy all American arcade. Wait a minute. Where's Kurt? Kurt. So TV works, doesn't it? Television, television. That's a that's a great idea. Don't touch TV. my clipper. Ew. And television. Who watches that anymore? But I, I YouTube I, is the way to go. But I was on dozens of channels all over. And you know, but YouTube. Who, who watches YouTube? Says the guy with 1,400 plus YouTube videos. <laughs> well, listen, I guess TV is still good locally, but you don't reach a global market, do you? Do you? And Speaking we don't of reach global. him anymore. Speaking of globes. He's so fat. So mean to me. Todd, Frank's mean to me again. He's always mean. Always mean and always vicious, isn't he? <sighs> You're a mess, Frank. But I'm a fat guy, so I can, get, I can get away with it. <laughs> We're up to bartering. Bartering really works. I got five carpet changes at TNT. I got all new carpet at the house. Uh, I got wiring. I like, uh, uh, gosh, what else did we... Uh, a new roof once. Um, Radio advertising. We, we got radio, a lot of radio ads. Um, that people still think we're running. It's amazing. Come in and they say, um, we heard you on the radio. I'm thinking, God, that was like five years ago. And, but I was always amazed. that we that, So barter is, is great. And the way you make it legal, you, because see, you just can't barter, you have to pay the sales tax. So I always declare it as a sale. 
on my income. So it looks like I took the money in, and then I record the money going out, and then I pay the sales tax on that, and it's all legal. It's absolutely, I did, I did research that. Because I actually advertised bartering in the newspaper. I said, we'll barter for whatever we needed at the time. So that did work. So think about that. Oh, I got a new air conditioning unit twice on the roof of our building. That was like 6,000 bucks each time. So uh, that's it on that. And we're up to rebuilding, reconditioning your games. Yes, this is the sore topic, isn't it, Frank? Because see now, you see, pinball machines aren't getting better each year, the old ones. So in other words, each year, your Adams family doesn't get better. It gets a year older. And you have to spend more time on these machines. So we have them uh, separated in three places, the cabinet and the head, okay? This is the everything on that. Um, the play field, over and under, and the electronics. So there's three areas you have to do. Some people skip one part, some people skip the other. Um, you can do this also uh, slightly differently. In the last two years, we started selling games as is working with the electronics renovated. Now, I just had a successful sale. The lady uh, was thrilled. I took $1,000 off the price on a demolition man. And she's going to do the rubbers and the uh, LEDs and the cabinet cleanup because the handles really had to get rebuilt. Actually, now you get them re-chromed or uh, powder-coated. But um, she wanted to do all that stuff herself, and she saved herself a thousand bucks. But we took all the circuit boards out, and we spent hours reheating them. The capacitors that were dead, Frank loves leaky capacitors, don't you, Frank? Yep. And Frank's battery board. And guess what? Frank bought a bunch of battery boards with him. We had to ship them here, priority mail, because you can't bring the lit all that lithium on the plane. So uh, they didn't arrive as the t start of our show, but we have them for all the boards except Gottlieb. Gottlieb doesn't have a space to put a battery board on, but you can put a button battery on. I, I did make a few small hand prototypes, but th nobody ever asked for it. So if there was ever a demand, I would make them, but yeah, it's, so not, it's not really necessary. So see Frank, stop him. He has them. He'll have them with him the rest of the show. They're 14 bucks each. The White Star system, Williams, all the Williams. Uh, he designed the battery board so it would fit in, in the hodgepodge of holes that the games have. Uh, uh, but you have to do all the things if you have a checklist. We made a checklist up ourselves, but um, you, you need to make sure you do what we call complete work. Um, don't reheat half the pin header pins. Uh, people used to make fun of me reheating pins. I've told this at other shows, too. Um, this Christmas will be two years since uh, 165 people died on an airplane that crashed and they traced it down to a cold solder connection in the cockpit light bulb. One of the light bulbs went off when it really didn't. And the pilot thought everything was just, well, and it started a chain reaction. Go on Google, type in plane crash, cold solder connection, and there's the story. It's plain as day, that is the number one issue with pinball machines uh, and video games. Also, the leaky battery syndrome. So they're, they're, the, they're the big killers of stuff. And then capacitors is right behind that, leaky caps. Chip They're sockets on the older games. Oh, You'll well fix so many problems just by going through. Chip and sockets. Just doing a, a list. Caps, sockets, reheating. If you put the game, you know, put it back together, it'll probably fix most of your problems. Yeah, it's uh, it, it takes time, but if you do it right and take your time, you know, you'll be known for your, your work and how well you're doing. And you want to make sure you get things square and right. Um, uh, the last subject on there is putting your sticker on the game. I love doing that, Frank, don't you? But we do it no. because it identifies your game and what year you sold it. It helps, spe especially with That's service. That's right, and what better person yeah. to explain the rebuilding process than my large, beautiful friend, Franklin. And he says I'm the He is large. Very big. <gasps> Frank, this is, this, is a f this is a seminar. It has to stay clean. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, tell him about this poor Pac-Man. Well, if you're going to sell games, you got to do complete and thorough work. You can come back here, Bertie. 
Oh, goody. Curdy is foaming. You gotta do your caps. You gotta do your fuse blocks. You gotta rebuild your monitor. Uh, power cord is always important, especially since most of the time the ground tabs are broken off. I've seen a lot of people not do the work. Say, ah, it works okay now. And then they're going to go out there and charge their customer a lot of money to fix later what they should have done. You can the see the time. caps on the Pac-Man for it. That's not good business. So do your best work because you only get one chance to make a good first impression. Now, Frank, can you tell me why the cabinet's all yellow? Well, the artwork couldn't be saved. Normally, Steve can bring it back to life, but when it's just too far gone, he hasn't been to work with. So we paint it yellow, and we have new decals coming for it. Well, we sand it first, so this, it'll be smooth for the decals. Well, of course. Just That's like you saw on the stern tour. The majority the of the time is spent sanded. prepping, sanding, filling holes, and dents, and dings. And then you're going to put the, um, the T-molding on later. Yeah, we can do color choices. Some people like the original orange, some people like blue, yellow, whatever they want, we can put on for you. And I see a new overlay, and the panel's been repainted. The new buttons. The smoke out's been cleaned. We'll put the glass in. That'll be all cleaned up. We've got to put in some new bulbs, LEDs, in the coin door. Actually, no, Paint no. Pac-Man doesn't have Oh, that's right. Yeah, see? Yeah. That's right. However, we did change the washer inside. The so that the, clean uh, the, the switches. Thing. Now, I noticed, too, that at some point, this was upgraded to a fluorescent light rather than the old light bulbs. So, now, this is still being cleaned, so keep in mind. No, I was throwing dirt. I went out back and threw some dirt. The wiring was very nice, too. I like all the tape. And it's still chairs. being worked on. It's still a work yeah, we didn't in clean progress. That up, it's not even done, not even close to me. We had to show them something. This, this show came up, and we had to show things. You we're just telling the guys to wrap it up. It's going in. <sighs> Frank, what about these pinballs? Let's go over and look at them. How about this thing? Can you tell us about it? Buck Rogers. No, a little more than that. Uh, it's got LEDs. Oh. I can't say Gottlieb, I get sued. No, so it's that but you just said it. <gasps> Oops. It, it look, most important, it has this one. Yeah, don't, don't, whatever you do is when you're doing a game, it's very important, don't muck it up with a stupid stuff. <laughs> right. That's how we tell what year we sold the game. Ruin the paint and devalue the game. No, these labels will peel right off with Zero damage. Zero. Okay. Frank, sure. what did we do here? All new rubbers, LEDs, drop targets. There's some things you just got to do. You got to do it. In this has the new Mach 2 board, too. Flip it seem okay. You got a lot of play on them, replace them, targets snap. You do all the work ahead of time, you're going to have a good, long, happy customer who's going to send you referrals, which is going to be your biggest oh, business, your biggest promotion is your existing customers. That's good. And, and maybe they'll buy my book. You should include it. Oh, can I have your book? Where Look out, Frank, what idiot lifts up the plate here with a ball still You told in me it? to. You said, I don't want to be the only one to look stupid. Can you do it? Can you help me out, Frank? Can you look stupid, too? <sighs> hey, wait a minute. What's that down there? Can you get a close look? <laughs> Slam! <laughs> oh, God, I love it. No, I don't want to ruin the game. That would be Frank, look at these flippers. Now, why would you waste time in putting a new plunger link in this? Well, the flippers don't flip right, you really can't play the game. So basically, with this new plunger and link, we'll new end of stroke switch, this flipper is as good as brand new and when the day came out. And this is also thing that's important. You see how this end of stroke switch has this little plastic spacer in there? It's built to a certain height. Just buy the right one. I see people, like this guy, try to sit there and take them apart and play with the leaves and... You can buy the right thing, save yourself some time, just get to put it. Steve Young, great, has all the stuff you need. Call them up, order it up. Don't well, be a, cheap a lot state. of parts right places market. all around the world stock these parts. They do. So Marco, Bay City, but uh, the Pimble point is Center. Just get the right, get the right, get the right parts Don't sit if there you can. Don't screw around with trying no. to rebuild it and change those leaves. It's a pain in the neck. I've done it. It's not worth it. And you got to change sleeves. All sleeves are very important. Yes. You Taking gotta this put apart, sleeves in. cleaning them. That will make the game play like new yep. for a long time. And of course, now, now what you never didn't cover painting, and Stephen's not here today. That creep took the day off. What? We have a bunch of black holes going out. Uh, is, that, is this the peanut gallery? I think that's what it is. Now, it I see. Like the Jurassic Park video. Look, uh, Frank, look. Frank, he's in the process of doing just what? was doing earlier the new end of doing what was just doing earlier that's great great attention. what were you just doing earlier <sighs> god help me the nice uh, thing is there are eight flippers on this one six, six, total. Total. six, six total six flippers. flippers yeah the guy that designed this one on the design blackwater 100 <laughs> listen
this is a work in progress. This poor guy's been waiting and waiting. And right here is the pot of gold. Oh, God. Oh. This is like a wonderful, new, wonderful, oh, this wonderful new motor to spin it's the right shape. black hole in the back. <laughs> a little small for his <laughs> taste, but here's what you got. Okay, it's been marked when it came in. You, you can buy these now. Oh, if you go away. on one of our videos, you, I, I have a link to eBay. You can buy them for $15, Frank. Trying to punch it around. And they're very easy to adapt to make it work. Now, but look, Frank, this part hasn't been done. Look at this ugliness here. Frank, Frank, I don't know what I'm showing. Frank, you're showing know. him the ugliness. Oh, that's right there. He didn't bring the camera up fast enough. Do that's the line the again. Go ahead. That's the ugliness right there. He, knows he doesn't want to throw up. He just ate it. The abuse. So this gets painted. No, it's only just something like that. Usually they'll never notice. They don't play under the lockdown bar. They don't play inside yeah. the game. Mm -hmm. That's what Todd, we should clean this up and paint it. Make it no, they'll never know. It'll be the yeah. nicest thing in their house. <laughs> okay, you have to say it like this. They'll never notice. You can't give away all the trade secrets. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, gosh. So you're basically saying a complete, total rebuild wherever possible, including touch-up work. Well, what about special stuff? Now, look at this. Custom work. Oh, it's it's custom work done to it. <laughs> New powder coating, which is now an option. You can find oh. powder coating in your look, neighborhood look, now. There's a television set in here stuff. now. There's oh, some you interesting look, you can upgrades. run your commercials there. Well, not television set. At least this customer will watch it. <laughs> I, could, I could. I could erase the Royal Rumble program. I could. Now, look at the striking distance. The difference. Striking distance? Difference. And look, a pile of my brochures. I think we'll include them with this cute little visit. Trash cans right over here. The trash cans right over here. Did you start that just to drive us nuts? Are you new or filming? Now, let me ask you a question. If I took this two by four and hit it really hard. It would be going up the ground. It would be the last thing you ever did. Poor Tom. He has a new baby boy. Ice. He just Stay had, away from the yes, Two days ago, mm -hmm. a little baby boy. Look at We're going to show the striking distance between that and yeah. LEDs. Striking distance? You're going to oh, show oh, light. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, you got sidetracked. Why, why is it, Frank, you always throw me off target? Because you have the attention and span of a net. I'm going to go into the ball skirt. Goodness, do something about it. Keep talking. Where did it go? Fix your games. <laughs> I mean, it's the idiot that's bumping this tilt bob. Side. Bro, I listen. Bump it. Sit there by itself. Say that word. Game of Spitz. Don't say videos anymore. Look, I have to group all this out. I think oh, to people I out there, once. they can't hear. They can't. You just did. Frank curse. No, you right. said fix your. And then I said you can't say. <laughs> Works. Right there, Rob. Works. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that was very inappropriate, young man. Inappropriate. Well, let me tell you something. I just ran <laughs> the bonus caveman no music lie. for that whole sh that whole mess. Well, that's because you're a pussy. So we're not allowed to curse, but you're not a straight lie. No, everyone knows you never run anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Only to the buffet. Now, see, the problem with the eye poke is I have help. to do a big stretch. <laughs> Just down his tippy toes, you never reach. <laughs> I've had enough. Frank, we've had enough. Let, let's go back to you, Todd. Yeah, but we didn't do the striking distance. Ah, we forgot. <laughs> okay, striking distance. Yeah, we didn't forget. You forgot. Well, I can't, we reminded you four times. Look, light bulbs, LEDs. There it is. Finally. That's the striking distance. 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 Striking distance. <laughs> oh, great vocabulary. I'm a we need a reality show. Bruce Willis movie. Striking distance is good. Mm -hmm. You're going to get sued for saying that. Man. What? Let's go. Back to you. Thank you very much. Well, we're almost out of time. We just have another little bit to cover. Uh, service and warranty. Uh, uh, this is key sales point when you're selling your games. Right, Frank? I think it's probably one of the reasons why we've survived as long as we have because Every day people call and say, oh, you know, I have this game, it doesn't work. And the next thing out of Todd's mouth is, well, did you call the guy you got it from? And if the number's disconnected that. or they don't want to be bothered. He doesn't say this game. So it's always a service after the sale. Plus, it's a good opportunity to get games back. You're going to need to rotate your inventory. So 
Yep, that does work wonders. Uh, we have a trade back guarantee. We guarantee a minimum of half back they paid toward another game. And if they have a game that we really could use, we'll offer them even more. We have it all in writing, so we have a guarantee of 50% in writing, which is also helpful when you actually make the sale. We have it printed in our brochures. Um, it's a credit, um, but you can always offer cash, too, if you really need it. Um, the, um, uh, you need to emphasize that you only serve as in the home what you sell. Of course, you can, you can fudge that, too. So if somebody has a problem, but you know, if you get the call from the guy that's got a Sinbad and he's had it in his house for 30 years, and they just turn it on now and it doesn't come, you know it's gonna be a very leaky battery situation. Do you really wanna get tied up with that in the private home and the customer you know, going back and forth? Um, if you do get a service call on your, uh, on your cell phone or some, try to do it within a week of your customer's phone call. If they don't hear back from you like very quickly, they may try calling other people and you may lose them as a customer. Uh, a lot of times they wait until the day before their party to tell you the game is broken, and we try to we try to help them out. We try to get a uh, you should try to have a competent technician. I've tried I've been looking for one for years myself, but give him a deal if he does service calls on his in, in his own car and off the clock. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's an idea. Okay, let's see. We are up to page nine, and let's see. As we roll into the staff, hire a good technical person, okay? You need at least one. Find a good electronics person, either moonlighting from the regular job or a bright guy from a local tech school. Make sure he's bright. Jason, for instance, goes around and does service calls for lots of different people, and he's done very well with that. He also gets you a chance to possibly get a good deal on somebody's game they don't want to fix. You also need to hire somebody that moves stuff uh, that's not going to smash the games. I got to tell you about the Hollywood heat we delivered at Christmas time. We had some guys that would come in, and um, they would. We had the truck loaded. They leave at seven in the morning, come back at five. They take our big truck and deliver everything in to four or five or six different places, and they come back. I got a call from someone who got Hollywood heat, and Hollywood heat. If you know the game, there's a captive ball in it. So what I did, we took the balls out to travel, and I put a long piece of masking tape that started at the captive ball and went all the way down to the flipper, and I wrote the magic marker, put ball here, put loose ball here, because there were uh, four balls in the machine. And the customer called me, they delivered it, game's playing, everything, the customer called me just about a half an hour later, he says, he says, listen, um, he says, your guys left, the game's working great, but do I have to leave that masking tape on the play field? So these idiots <laughs> left that big piece of masking tape and said, oh, Frank. And of course, uh, it's just important that you, you, you try to work with that because you just don't know what you're going to find. And, and we, we've had a hard time finding service guys, haven't we, Frank? Yes, we have. Yes, we're ready for more. Look, I'm the legend. Wallace. You can burn that hat now, Wallace. Yeah, don't, don't keep it on too long. You might like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, do you know where those idiots are? You're not idiots, you're furious. Furious. <laughs> I can hear them. I can hear them. This is making me useless. Listen, you're stuck. You're stuck with these idiots. But, but you have to do deliveries. Control the flaps, thanks. You have to do the, I'm sorry, I didn't do the flaps. Oh, Jonathan, stand, sit back. I need you a little closer. Right here. Stay a little closer. Because this, this is natural. You know, because we'd be sitting outside. Because, 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 because oh. this is a. Oh. I had to squeeze one of them. In. A triple. Okay, I have to depend on these guys to deliver this rubbish, right? Right. They have to go up and down and up and down steps, and they work very hard and they get great tips, don't they? No. Do you I know high people? fives and handshakes. I could. Or you get the bottle of water, kiss of death. Yeah, they give him. A, they give him a, a, a. Would you like a glass of water? And then we can change you no tip. You get a tip, or you get the shit. How do people not tip? Get in the camera. You're in the video too, Scotty. You're you only sneaking it's out. Scotty. They want to go home. I just said, a tip. It's just five o'clock. For goodness sake. Oh, it's God. half the day. It's not nine even. hours in the day, right, guys? Oh my God. Wrong with Kurt's schedule here. 
hurt. Now listen, the nice thing is these boys are able to pallet and crate. If you've been watching our videos, we ship now. 70% of everything we sell is shipped. It's hard yes, to believe. Yes, 70%, it's probably like 95% of what we sell is shit. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Say that. I'll clean up well, that language. I'm going to bump that one out. That one I'm going to leave in. Thumbs down. These people just hate me. God damn, my thumbs down. I'm Even your nephew you hates you. give me thumbs down in the, in the... Oh, I got th that guy right over there. Oh, gosh. They're giving me thumbs down on my own seminar. Wow. <laughs> Todd, what should we do about it? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? What should we do as we enter our final, I believe this is our final slide. Well, you know what? Try finding local collectors who need extra money, who love cleaning and restoring old pinballs and video games, recruit men from other vendors who want a moonlight. Uh, for your office and computer hostess, we need hostesses for our parties. Find bored housewives who have good voices and personalities that want a flexible hours to answer the phones and learn all the stuff. Incentives. We have a pension plan, we have paid sick vacation holidays, uh, we also have a great medical plan for all of our employees. Um, uh, and also you'll have to, if you're gonna do this on a serious basis, you have to think about doing drug tests too. Uh, parties and rentals, a necessity for your operation. You know what, I, we talked about rentals earlier, didn't we Frank? Uh, the birthday parties do very well and they get people interested and we also see the kids and sometimes one of our employees are able to go around and maybe show the kids don't know how to play a game. We show them how to play the pinball and what to shoot for. Shoot for the flashing lights. That's an easy one. Uh, and sometimes they get very interested. And the families, the parents come back and say, hey, we, my kids were here. They saw a game. They really want to get a game for their house. Okay? Uh, you can earn yourself uh, 4500 to 4000 a week using the same equipment you're selling. That's what I do. Okay, you keep the equipment clean and working if you can. It's hard to get everything to work. If you have an arcade, there's no way, no how, you can keep everything in that place working. And they can't keep the stuff working in here. You just can't, it's just not possible. But you can prove that you're not like the others and you're gonna work on it, especially if you try to fix it in front of the people while they're having their party. You go in there and says, my, my kid really wants to play Pac-Man. You go in there and see if you can get the Pac-Man running or whatever. You can also discounts for camps, churches, schools, synagogues, daycare centers, okay? And, and it does really work. And as you saw earlier, it did qualify us for a Best of Philadelphia. So we're very proud to get that award. We rent our stuff out to corporate private parties. Uh, prepare to work odd hours though, guys. You better be ready. Maintain a special rate for party planning companies, advertising rental sections, party guides, planners, uh, we have something in our local kids' guide. Tournaments, pinball tournaments, have you noticed they're really sprouting up? And in near us, uh, we have a, uh, a place in, um, uh, I guess about an hour away from it, has lady pinball leagues. The women are starting to get interested in this. So consider an all-women pinball league. Uh, you could try, get some of them ladies involved. They really like it, and it's something interesting to do. They may not be buyers but at least it gets connections, leads for other inventory. You're getting new inventory in. Charity events, definitely plan charity events. Frank, what do you think? Anything to add to that? No, I mean, be creative. Try stuff. Don't be afraid to try something that might not work. You know, you never mm -hmm. know. Well, I guess it'd be as creative as possible. Uh, that's pretty much in conclusion, as I can, we covered a lot of stuff today, and. Well, here we are. We're all done now. Good night. Now get out! Good day. Now get out! And that concludes our seminar for today, folks. Thanks for you all staying. Really appreciate it. <laughs> we had a lot of fun, didn't we, Frank?